In this season of Advent, one of the key players is the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah prophesied for the Jewish people awaiting the coming of their Messiah. He wrote from where the Messiah should come, what the Messiah will be like, and what he will do. He shall judge the poor with justice, Isaiah says, and justice shall be the band about his waist. Psalm 72 would seemingly echo this sentiment. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice is an attribute of the Messiah for sure, as well as a cardinal virtue for each one of us that we ought to strive for. But it's often pitted against mercy, as if justice and mercy were opposites. It would be worth it to reflect on the interplay of justice and mercy, especially as we sit within days of the beginning of a jubilee year for which mercy is the theme. Justice and mercy are not mutually exclusive. Justice, which is giving someone what they do, and mercy, which is benevolent forgiveness rooted in love, work hand in hand. St. Thomas Aquinas once wrote, mercy without justice is the mother of dissolution, and justice without mercy is just cruelty. I don't know many, or any people actually, who would say, I prefer cruelty to mercy, or a strict accounting of my sins and wrongdoings, as opposed to forgiveness. The reality is, we need both. In the strict sense of justice, the scales are never tipped in our favor if it's men on one side and God on the other. Mercy and justice, more than anything else, are codependents. Some might suggest that mercy does away with justice, and such false thinking could be insidious in eating away at what is the truth. While mercy may go above and beyond justice, it does not make it go away or cause it to cease to exist. I explain this when I talk to the kids in my grammar school or the religious education program through the priest's vestments. You see, underneath the outer vestment is the stole, symbolic of justice. The overvestment, the chasuble, is like mercy. It covers it, goes beyond it, but does not make it go away. St. John Paul II told us, mercy is manifested in its true and proper aspect when it restores to value, when it promotes and draws good from all the forms of evil existing in the world and in man. Understood in this way, mercy constitutes the fundamental context of the messianic message of Christ and the constitutive power of his mission. That is why we beg for it. Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Or as the offertory of this very Mass, which will be prayed in just a few moments, says, since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Blessed indeed are the eyes that see what we see and the ears that hear what we hear. One Italian cardinal about seven years ago opined, justice and mercy either go hand in hand 
each preparing the steps of the other, or they both limp along, groping in the fog.